Welcome back chemists. In this video, I'm gonna go through how you calculate the pH, the pOH, and the hydrogen and hydroxide ion concentrations of strong bases. This is the problem that I'm going to do. And then these are the two that you're gonna try that I'll show you all the work and how to do all those uh, answers, or get those answers. First off though, what are strong bases? So I've listed the strong bases around the outside here. And I want you to look carefully what you see in common. And if you thought it's hydroxide, you're right. So we have these alkali uh, metal hydroxides and then alkaline earth metal hydroxides. And that is a lot of times why they'll say that bases are alkaline or they have alkaline solutions. So the most common ones you're gonna see are sodium and potassium hydroxide. These are a little pricey. And then the most soluble of these is barium hydroxide. So that's the one we're gonna use, okay? First you wanna do is write down all the formulas that we're gonna to use to calculate these uh, values. So pH, pOH, um, and the hydrogen and hydroxide concentration. I'd me you know, memorize these strong bases as I remove them, okay? So get a piece of paper so you can write these down. These are your calculations that you're gonna need. These four are the major ones, okay? I'll slide them there, write those down. And then um, I have a, three facts that you're gonna to wanna to know. Okay, to classify as a, a basic solution or acidic or neutral. So I'll remove these, we'll need those later. If you have something that's basic, it means the hydroxide's greater than the hydrogen ion concentration. If they were equal, you'd call it neutral, and if the hydrogen ion concentration was greater than the hydroxide, it would be an acid. These work at any temperature, okay? However, when you're using these two formulas, this one, I'll replace a couple here, and this one, those only work at 25 degrees, and the most common way to start the problem, in my opinion, is to use this one where you start with pOH, okay? Let's make sure we understand what it means to be a strong base. Now we know who they are and the formulas to use. So sodium hydroxide is a strong base. It'll produce sodium ions and hydroxide ions completely. So that means it's gonna have 100% dissociation. Because of that, the sodium hydroxide concentration will equal the hydroxide concentration. So the sodium hydroxide concentration will be the same as the hydroxide because all of it makes products, okay? So what does that mean? For example, if I have a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, I will have exactly 0.1 molar hydroxide, okay? Now be careful. What if you had one of those alkaline earth metals like barium? It's still going to dissociate completely, but this is the thing that's tricky, is the hydroxide ion concentration is gonna be double the barium hydroxide. So if you had barium hydroxide at 0.1 molar or molarity, then the hydroxide would actually be 0.2, okay? Keep that in mind when you use those because that's gonna change the math. All right, on to the math problem. Here we go. So this is the one I'm gonna work through with you. So grab your calculator, I got mine. And let's get going. Okay, so we've got, what's the pH of a 0.25 molar NaOH? I'm gonna calculate the pOH and the hydrogen ion also. I'm just gonna move this to the bottom, kinda of keep it visible for us, and off we go. So the first thing you wanna know, again, is that sodium hydroxide, if you put it into uh, water, it'll dissociate completely into all sodium ions that are aqueous or aqueous and hydroxide ions. So there will be no sodium hydroxide left. Um, so, for example, maybe even say I started with a solid, it would all dissolve. That's what it means, okay? So that means if we had 0.25, if that was the NaOH, that's going to equal the OH, so the hydroxide concentration is 0.25 molar. Then, I like to use pOH right away, so I'm going to use this formula that I said to write down with those green little pieces of paper, so negative log of the 0.25 molarity. Then grab your calculator. There is a log button right there for this one. I like this calculator, a simple one for these calculations. So what I'm gonna do is do negative and then log of 0.25, close the parentheses. And there's our concentration turned into a pH, or actually I lied, a pOH. So 0 0.60206. Okay, I'm gonna stop writing. Why? Because we have to follow some significant figure rules that are unique for pH and pOH. So the number of sig figs in the concentration is the number of decimal places in the pH or the pOH. So I had two significant figures in my concentration. I get to keep two decimal places. 
So be, be okay though, don't worry. You might be like, wait, 0.6, you're fine. That's a pOH, we're not there yet. So I'm gonna move this off, a pH, and so most of you are thinking this should be a pH of, you know, up, up towards 12, 13. So how are you gonna find the pH? You're gonna take 14 minus the pOH. What formula did I use? I used this one. So if I add these two together at 25 degrees Celsius though, be careful, then those two equal 14. So here's the math, it's simple. You just take pH and you take 14 minus 0 0.60. It has been a very, very long day here today, so I'm gonna use my calculator, don't judge me. 14, that's not right, so you can tell why. Minus 0 0.6, and I get 13.4. Now my calculator's wrong. I, got, I have to add that zero, remember. The rule was, here it is again, the number of sig figs in the concentration is the number of decimal places in the pH. So there's my final answer. Box it out for your wonderful teachers out there, okay? Easy for them to find it and give you the points. That's what you want. Next, we're not done yet. So this is my hydroxide concentration. What I want to do is find my hydrogen ion concentration. So again, at 25 degrees, this fact is true, that it equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So if I wanted the hydrogen ion concentration, I'm going to do a little algebra here, 1 times 10 to the minus 14, and then I would divide by, this is 0.25, so let me rewrite it like this, you'll see. So if this was 0.25, and then this is that, there we go. We're going to put that in the denominator, so 0.25, and I'm going to keep the unit. Okay, grab that calculator again. Another thing that you got to get used to is putting in scientific notation correctly. So 1, and then you got to go second EE. -E. On this calculator, it's the yellow there. Negative 14, I like to hit equals. I'm kind of weird like that, but I want to see that number, make sure I didn't do anything wrong. Divided by 0.25, there we go. Okay, so we have four, and again, my calculator got rid of some digits, because I can keep two sig figs. 4.0 times 10 to the minus 14 um, molarity. And if you're worried, you can multiply that back, you know, multiply it by times 0.25, and you'll get one of the negative 14, okay? Now again, two sig figs here total was because I had two sig figs total in the concentrations. So be careful, playing by different sig fig rules. Again, box out, get your unit. Um, I mean, you could even put a label on there if you wanted, okay? So we've got our hydroxide concentration, we've got our hydrogen concentration, we've got our pH, and then I'm gonna put this up here. Don't forget, we did have our pOH was way back up here, okay? Now, this was a alkali metal, so again, it only produced one hydroxide for every one um, mole that you dissolved, okay? So I'm gonna give you a hint that I gave you a little bit harder one in the practice problem. So here we go, here's yours. Now, what you want to do is grab your calculator, grab your own paper, write these two problems down, pause the video, and then come back and check if you got them right, okay? So one, two, three, pause. Boom, here we go. I'm going to show you the answer for this one. First thing I did was, I'll put that here actually, I put that in scientific notation, has two sig figs, keep in mind, makes one mole of hydroxide for one mole of potassium hydroxide. I like to use the pOH, so there's my pOH carried it to two sig figs, because I had two uh, significant figures here. Then I subtracted it from 14 and got 12.18 pH. That makes sense, right? Seems like it's right. The other thing I want you guys to think about too is when we calculate the um, hydrogen ion concentration, does this match up with that fact that I told you before? So if 1.5 times 10 to the minus two molar, is that greater than this tiny hydrogen concentration to the negative 13? Absolutely, which is what makes this thing a base or basic. Even if you didn't know this was a base, it proves it now, okay? So here's the next one. Now this one was harder, okay? Remember the fact that I told you about this, okay? All right, here we go. So barium hydroxide makes two hydroxide ions for every one mole, so two moles to one mole, so you double it. So over here I just kind of showed the math that I doubled that because I got twice as many hydroxide ions. Then you put that into the pOH, that's just what I like to do, calculate your pOH. Again, that's not a pH, don't worry. We're going to subtract it from 14 and get a pH of 13.7. 
because this one was a little harder, I didn't calculate the hydrogen or hydroxide. Okay, well, that should be good. I hope this helps. Again, here are those formulas that I used. If you said, I didn't copy those down, I don't know why you didn't, but here they are. And then that one and this one works at 25 only. Like a separate video about why it has to be 25. And then last but not least, don't forget, I'm gonna throw this on the top. The sig fig rules are very different, okay? And the other last little tricky thing is, I'm gonna put a little X here, bury my hydroxide, be careful with your hydroxide concentration with alkali, alkaline earth metals. Thanks, hope to see you again. Good luck, chemists.